if we look at the patterns of testosterone, from what I can tell is that, and it may be more nuanced for the menopausal woman, so this is why I want to bring this up, is that the biggest increase in testosterone happens in the morning. So is that accurate? And if a postmenopausal woman gets more testosterone in the morning, wouldn't that be a better time to actually do strength training? Well, testosterone is like all the other sex hormones. It has its own pulse. So we'll have a boost in the morning kind of to try to counter cortisol. But if you are doing strength mm. training, you get a boost after strength training. If you do true sprint interval mm. training, and we hear this rhetoric about how menopausal and perimenopausal women shouldn't do high intensity work. It's because the carry through isn't there. If you're doing it properly, then you have a boost of testosterone and growth hormone after that exercise. Exercise in itself is a stress and your body responds to that stress in particular ways to overcome it so that it gets stronger and fitter and can do it again. When we get into peri and postmenopause, and we don't have all the pulse signaling from estrogen and at some points progesterone, luteinizing hormone, it tends to look at what are my available sex hormones and what are my available steroid hor hormones. So it's yeah. like, okay, yeah, we need testosterone because it helps counter that exercise stress. It helps drop cortisol. We need growth hormone because we've just broken down all of this tissue. So we need to stimulate that yeah. tissue to repair and testosterone growth hormone kind of go hand in hand. So we're looking at the pulse of okay. these hormones. It's not just we see that it peaks in the morning and then kind of wanes off and then peaks again. There's ways of increasing the pulse of those hormones depending on what you're doing. So that's why like when we started this mm. conversation, it's like understanding the woman and, and where she has the most energy so we can mm -hmm. maximize the, those different pulses. A lot of women think that when they go to the gym, they have to come out feeling smashed. A lot of times if you mm. doing the strength training properly, and you're not doing a metabolic stress of 10 to 12 reps, but you're actually staying on the lower power end because it's a central nervous system response. You come out feeling really good and relaxed because you get that growth hormone, that testosterone, and a subsequent parasympathetic mm. response. So you don't come out feeling smashed. You come out feeling like, yeah, I feel worked, but I feel really good. And that's where we find like low energy. This is a way of increasing that energy and feeling like, yeah, it's more because oh. it's the brain effect, right? So you're like waking up the brain from that right. system. So you do a heavy load and then you're like, I have clarity. I can do something else. Right. So, okay. So did I just hear then I'm 54, there would be no need for me to ever do a 10 to 12 rep set with my weights. I should always do the heaviest I can possibly lift in five or six reps. Yeah, but we have to periodize that too. So when we're looking at what's the best, like optimal range for you, you know, so you're 54, um, you want to have the base of it in that lower rep range, right? So you don't ever want to go over eight. What I try to get people to understand now, because looking at something like one repetition maximum is too hard to figure out. And your one rep max changes yeah. depending on how strong you feel. So I say, okay, you want to go in and you want to look at doing your weights with two reps in reserve. So that means you do enough of a load so that you could possibly eke out two more reps at the end with good form. Mm -hmm. That's it. So, mm -hmm. you know, that could be okay. six reps. It could be eight reps, but don't go over the eight. And this is how we can really okay. load it and keep it in that power-based range based on how you're feeling in the day and what you can do. So we look at starting that way, and then we can go into different like macro cycles, micro cycles. What are you doing in the week? What are you doing over four weeks? How much loading are you? Where's your deload? Are we doing five reps? Are we doing three by twos? Are we doing cluster sets? There's so much you can do within the programming there to stay in that bottom yeah. part without ever having to get into that 10 to 12 rep range.